Hello and welcome to Cash In on IT, your go-to podcast for all things information technology at MCC. My name is Art Brown, I'm the Dean of IT at MCC, and I'm thrilled to guide you on this exciting journey through the dynamic world of IT. Together we'll explore the latest trends, innovations, and success stories within our department, giving you an insider's look at what makes our IT community thrive. Throughout our various episodes, we'll shine spotlights on incredible talent of our faculty, dedication of our staff, and some of the ambitious spirits of our students. We welcome you to sit back, relax, listen to our seasoned IT professionals and aspiring students as we begin this journey on our podcast. Welcome to another episode of Cash In on IT. My name is Art Brown. I'll be your host this afternoon. I'm pleased to share with us or our audience two guests that we have, two students, uh, currently Thomas, who's a recent graduate, and on my left, Ross, is a soon-to-be graduate of our program. So we're going to jump in today and learn a little bit more about each of their pathways through MCC and their journeys planned beyond MCC. So welcome again, Ross and Thomas, to um, our podcast episode, and glad to have you both here with us today. Thank you. Gotcha. Thank you so, for having me. Yeah, thank you, Tom. So we want to um, allow our audience to know a little bit about each of you. So I'm going to kind of go back and forth with each of you, asking the same questions, or I may alter those a little bit, starting with Thomas on my left here. So Thomas, if you can, share with myself. I know a little bit about your story, but more so our audience. Um, you know, as far as you feel comfortable going back, your journey to MCC, um, you can go back as far as high school if you feel comfortable. So yeah, just kind of share with us um, what that looks like. Sure. So um, I took a bit of an unconventional route after high school. I figured, you know, college wasn't right for me at the time. So I started a career in retail um, as a stalker. And after some time, I attempted to promote um, in the company I was working for and found that I was having a hard time being selected for positions just because I was uh, lacking in education, or a higher education, if you will. So I made the decision after a while to come back and actually pursue a degree, and I started that academic career with Metro. Got, gotcha, okay. And if you can, Thomas, share with the audience, uh, what was your chosen major while you were here at MCC? Sure, so um, my chosen major was computer science. So I was in par a part of the computer technology transfer program specializing in computer science. Sounds good, okay. And Ross, <laughs> same question for you. So yeah. if you don't mind, a little bit um, about your background and your story. Well, I am almost 38, so it was a little while between high gotcha. school and here, and I came here through 180 RAP. Okay. So my route was a little bit different than gotcha. a lot, but uh, I kind of decided that a new, you know, a new uh, journey was kind of what I needed, some new career field. So uh, gotcha. RT, IT seemed to be something that I thought would still be viable for you know the rest of my working career. So cybersecurity seemed to be the thing that was most interesting to me. So I've kept it for the whole year, okay. and uh, it seems to be working for me so far. Gotcha. And if you don't mind sharing, if you're comfortable uh, for our audience, 180 RAP, just to let them know that the history of that program is the reentry re re assistance program for like felons. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. And how's your time been here at MCC? Pretty good. Yeah. I like Metro. I, I've been telling people that if you fail at Metro, it's because you didn't want to succeed. Okay. Good to hear. Okay. All right. So, Thomas, back to you, looking at my talking points here. So, what can you reflect upon? Um, was there a class or classes in particular that you felt helped prepare you for your journey? Um, and I'm not trying to give too much away, but, you know, you've chosen a computer science major. We'll get into a little bit more about your time at UNO but are there a class or two that stood out that's really helped prepare you for your journey? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think one class that really helped me was IT ethics. Okay. Um, that gave me kind of a really good foundation and sort of some problem solving thinking skills that are really relevant to IT and maybe some really common pain points in terms of ethics that occur in the IT sector. Um, besides that, I really liked my computer science classes. So intro to CS1, intro to CS2. Both of those were very helpful, actually, for continuing my education with UNO and also for my internships. Perfect. Okay. And I'm going to go deeper, but let me go to Ross. So, Ross, tell me, you, um, you've you chosen to major in cybersecurity, is that correct? Yeah. And then, can I ask you the same question, or is there a class or two 
or and maybe tell the audience too, how far along are you in your educational journey? About halfway through. Okay. Uh, and I did most of the prereqs first. Okay. So, but uh, as far as the IT classes that I've taken so far, I think the ones that helped the most was uh, uh, it helped me like uh, you know figure out what businesses want to hire. So that's so I went in through the LinkedIn and went through Handshake, which was really helpful through Metro, so that I could find a job, so that I could ha you know try to find something that would kind of be in the IT field. So that, so far, that's been the most useful class for me. Okay, and uh, would you, if you can share with me and the audience. Coming into the program, did you have any prior like technology experience, formal or informal? I mean, just growing up in the '90s and mm -hmm. being Learning. having a lot of time to gotcha. spend fiddling okay. with computers. It's about it. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So, Thomas, back to you. New prospective students coming to MCC. Uh, what would you say for, uh, and maybe jumping ahead to tell the audience, you have a career objective that you've defined, and maybe. Uh, what you've learned at MCC, what are some traits that might help someone moving towards a similar career role as yours? Sure, good question. Um, some, some traits that really help with the same career goals. Um, being an active learner is really important. Uh, never stop learning, that's a really big part of the IT field, I think. Okay. So you have to be really comfortable with always pursuing more knowledge. Okay. Um, besides that, always having an open mind. That kind of relates back to gotcha. similarly wanting always more knowledge because it'll be very often that people might disagree with your opinions or provide different ones and it's important to really look at those and analyze those effectively okay. and appreciate them. Okay. What, and I don't, as I'm recalling, I don't think I did ask, and can you share, do you have that mid to long term career goal in IT that you're working towards? Yeah, for sure. So I'm aspiring to be a software engineer. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. And then Ross, back to you. Um, would you say, have you fully defined where you want to be within your career, either mid or long term, or even currently now? I know you we'll talk about your current role, but. Yeah, I mean, I'd say that so far, I mean, my main goal is to find a remote job because I would like to be able to work from home so that I can gotcha. travel and kind of live in different places. Okay. And so doing strictly cybersecurity over the internet seemed to be a good way to achieve that goal. Okay. Uh, I am leaving myself open to be flexible for you know, what might have come my way at the moment, but that is okay. what I'm aiming towards. Sounds good, okay. And so, Thomas, you shared uh, just having, I think you mentioned ethics as far as key skills. Um, you mentioned problem solving, if I'm not mistaken. I think I heard you say that. Anything else that stands out for a new and aspiring computer software engineer? Would you, anything that you can share with the audience that, you know, if it's, let's say, you know, someone doing a career pivot or even a new high school entering student, anything you might, additional you might share with them that you haven't already? Well, um, <laughs> good question. Getting comfortable with math, I think, for software engineering. It doesn't have to be really deep math, but getting a bit more comfortable with algebra could be really important. Good, okay. And that's, a, I mean, it's a common question that we get all the time or I get from students, prospective students about how deep does my math need to be, especially if I'm moving towards a degree or career in software engineering or computer science. So college algebra is, I think, what I heard. But, or, well, you tell me. I don't want to put words in your mouth. No, <laughs> yes. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think for software engineering, algebra is really the most you'll ever apply day to day. Right. Um, and of course, a computer science degree is different. Correct. Um, there's going to be a lot more theoretical math involved with a CS degree, which some might like. Um, but a software engineering degree will really focus more on algebra. Correct. On the day to day. But can you yes. talk to the audience for those that don't know? So you're going to take the higher level math. And if I'm not mistaken, you should have completed most of your major requirements here with us yes. on that degree. So can you maybe share with the audience what some of those upper level math classes were? Yep. So with Metro, I took uh, math foundations in computer science or in computers. And that was, in layman's terms, a discrete mathematics class. So you're talking about counting finite sets. It's the theory of counting, basically. Um, besides that, I took Calculus 1 and Calculus 2 here as well. And beyond that, do you want me to also go into what? maybe the classes that I'm going to be taking yes, at UNO? Yes, that would be helpful, yes. Yes. So at UNO, I'm also looking at taking, well, I already took Applied Linear Algebra. Okay. And I also took Intro to Math Proofs. The next classes that I'm looking at are actually just my upper division extensions. So that'll be Graph Theory and Applied Combinatorics. Okay. 
So pretty interesting topics. Yep. Gotcha. All right, Ross, question for you. So your experience at MCC, just kind of further elaborating, what can you say, maybe are there one or two challenges or obstacles you faced entering this program? Anything that um, looking back or looking ahead that you might want to alert the audience that they might want to consider as becoming a student here with us? As far as becoming a student here, everything was incredibly easy. Right. Like I went down there and they helped me make appointments with it, asked me what skill level I was at as far as like doing it myself, and then pretty much held my hand through the whole thing. Gotcha. Uh, so as, if, as little or as much assistance as you need, they, they made it really easy. It's been kind of, I would say, an unbumpy road to get good. here That's as far as, uh, as Metro makes it. Gotcha. So you've got the right level of supports, picking classes, yeah. or it's pretty well laid out is what I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And as far as you have a specific academic advisor, navigator mm -hmm. helping you get through the process, okay. Yeah, went ahead and did the whole rest of the year that I'm gonna have here gotcha. and kind of mapped it all out. Okay. And if I just complete all the courses that were going on, I'll be ready to graduate next year. Okay, so, so we're gonna shift gears. Um, I'll start with you, Russ, since I'm uh, leaving off with you. Um, one of the reasons I wanted you both here today and for the audience is I feel like you both are success stories to various degrees. Um, you've either secured employment while you're working towards your education, and you continue that as you further your education. So Ross, can you tell uh, myself and the audience, you know, you've been able to secure a position in your respective area of study, what that looks like? Yeah, yeah I got a job through uh, E2 Optics, which I actually heard through the Handshake app mm -hmm. at you. Metro. Okay. And while the job isn't pertaining to my specific degree as I'm a cable installer, right. Uh, they said that they were expanding pretty greatly and knowing that they uh, found me through Metro and mm -hmm. what I'm doing through Metro, I assumed that it would actually not take me that long to kind of go up through the ladder, especially they said they were expanding exponentially. So I'm kind of looking forward to not doing cable laying for very long, gotcha. kind of getting up there to do something in the IT field. Okay. So right. just got to do what I got to do to get up there. Okay. And I, I appreciate the fact that the humility you've, you've, realize that you're trying to get your foot in the door and I think that goes a long way and maybe can you share with the audience your take on that I, I have my opinions but I think it's good for especially new participants in the IT space to realize that there is a level of humility that needs to take place and any any thoughts or comments on that yeah I mean uh, I think we said put it really well yeah just humility is an uh, it's not it's not an IT job or exactly what I want right now right. and uh, cable laying doesn't really sound like the most glamorous job but right. uh, it is with the company and they said they hire from within and so okay. I'm talking to them and they're willing to work with me with school and know, knowing that I go to school in the evenings so I'm hoping that I'll be able to get a job that I actually uh, will apply towards what I'm trying to learn. Perfect. Okay. That, that's that's super important in my personal opinion. So thanks for sharing that. So I'm coming back to you, Ross. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Thomas. Tell us a little bit. I know similar story. You know, you've completed your coursework and ha I believe halfway or three quarters of the way through your coursework with us, you've been able to secure a position as well. Can you share with the audience a little bit about that? Yeah, of course. Um, I actually obtained two internships during my time at Metro. So the first one was like you said, three quarters or almost a bit over halfway through with National Indemnity Company. Okay. I was a part of their systems administration team, so I was a systems intern. Okay. Um, the second internship that I managed to obtain after that one was with Elemental Scientific Incorporated. Okay. And that involved, the job title for that was software testing intern. Okay. So I became a member of their software development team and okay conduct quality assurance on their products. Okay, very cool, very cool. What, uh, so I'm gonna go back to you, Ross. Tell me a little bit about, or with this new role, you kind of alluded to it, but even with the fact that it may not be specifically related to your, your mid to long-term career goal, um, well, let me go back. I think you told me we kind of had a little <laughs> side conversation before you got here. You haven't really started the role yet. Right? On Monday. Yeah, so you'll yeah. kind of know some a little June 3rd, yeah. Gotcha, a little premature in my questions, but can you anticipate, reflecting on back some of your coursework, do you think there's one or two skills that you would have acquired that you think are gonna best help you prepare for this position? Yeah, I mean, I would say in general, the uh, preparing for jobs is just, you know, learning how to communicate plus understanding uh, as why you would need to put these uh, position or why you would need to put the cables in everything and like why you would need to do these and what kind of cables they are for what purposes I think will at least come in handy. Right. Um, so I'm not just somebody who can be taking directions, perhaps I can, 
understand what they're trying to do, uh, which also would help me fix any errors if there's an error or anything gotcha. like that. Gotcha. So, uh, you know, hopefully it's just kind of all, I figured it just kind of all goes together a little bit, even if it's kind of, you know, low level. Right. And you've, and I, and I'm, Correct me if I'm wrong. I believe with your pathway, you would have taken some of our PC repair courses, and That's have you gotten that far? Oh, That's okay, you haven't yeah. gotten them yet. Okay, so you'll so timely with what you got coming up. Yeah. So, gotcha. And so, Thomas, back to you. Can you share, um, you know, with the coursework when you when you accepted those two roles? Are there any specific skills that you've acquired throughout your coursework at Metro? Then, even looking ahead at UNO, like any one or two things that have helped prepare you for those experiences. For my internships, yes. yeah. Um, <coughs> my intro to CS classes were really helpful, Kay. just gaining an understanding of some concepts that are really relevant to both internships. Kay. The other thing is IT ethics was also kind of helpful. Mm -hmm. Actually, it was very helpful, Kay. just because um, it can happen sometimes that people might have a desire to cut corners on certain things or certain processes where that should really not be the case. So having a better understanding of ethics as it applies to IT, just make sure that you're doing things the right way. Okay. So yeah, those intro to CS classes and IT ethics classes really help in everyday work at both of my internships that okay. I had, or so. had and have. Okay, thank you. So Ross, yes. two last questions for you. Sweet. So as you're preparing to make this transition to the, the workforce, you're still, you're still a student, is there any final recommendations for the audience, students that are looking to start where you are that you can share with them to say, you know, as a student looking for an IT opportunity. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I would say apply for the job anyway. Okay. Uh, I wasn't really sure that I was going to get this job, and uh, I would say that the job description wasn't as thorough as I wanted it to be until right. I actually got the interview, and then it still took them a week and a half to get back to me and tell me tell tell me that I got the job. Right. And. I just kind of worked, you know, in the meantime until then. I really, I actually didn't really think I was going to get it, and I just applied anyway and went and talked to them right. about it. And then, you know, be honest up front with them, like, you know, I, I have I needed a certain schedule, right? Uh, and so the certain schedule works for them, but uh, I, you know, be upfront with them and just apply anyway. You never know. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. And Thomas, similar question. So you're uh, same thing. If there's you know any parting comments you might have for the listeners. Uh, one or two, you know, you're still kind of fully in the academia world, but anything you can share with these students or potential student candidates that might be wanting to take the same journey as yourself, especially with software testing, I'm sorry, with computer science as their major. Right. Um, I would really just say keep trying. Um, it can be pretty daunting when you get started and there's a lot of stuff involved with computer science and software engineering, but um, similar to what Ross was saying also, you just got to you got to apply to places and just keep trying basically. I mean, my last my internship that I currently have, it was kind of a last ditch effort to get a summer internship. I was applying in March and I, I thought it was hopeless, I couldn't get anything, but I I kept applying to places and I finally got one, so. Gotcha. Very cool. And I guess two more questions for you. A little little bit deeper dive Thomas for you. Can you maybe share with the audience, um, so your experience in transitioning or transferring from Metro to UNO, can you elaborate a little bit more how seamless or hopefully not painful has that been coming from MCC going to UNO? Of course. I had a really good experience transferring from Metro to UNO. My, all my credits transferred and they transferred as what I intended them to. So I was able to continue with UNO right where I left off at Metro. So gotcha. I entered basically as a junior and, and I'm on track to actually complete my bachelor's degree by May of next year. Perfect, okay, all right. And then parting question for you both. So Ross, I'll start with you. Sure. Tell me or share with the audience, like what do you do for fun? Like, it, it, does it involve IT or is there anything that you do in your spare uh, time? I mean, I guess. I, I, it's, you know, pretty common nerd stuff. Uh, you know, I play video games, play PS5. Gotcha. Um, I got a membership at like Lords and Gardens or Fontenelle, so I like to go outside and go for hikes and okay. stuff like that. Travel if I can, like I'm going to Denver this weekend to cool. go hang out with my friend for his birthday. Gotcha. And uh, you know, just Magic the Gathering, other other really nerdy stuff. And uh, but I mean, as far as like specifically goes for anything that uh, in the IT field, I mean. 
I recently came across a lot of computer parts, so I've been building really cheap computers and selling them. Gotcha. So I mean, that's somewhat similar. Gotcha. Uh, and so it's just kind of you know tro making me troubleshoot and go through all that on my own, which has been fun. Very cool. Very cool. And Thomas, you like anything you do, spare time that involves or maybe doesn't involve technology? Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I try and mess around with computer programs a bit and write my own stuff. Right. Um, just tinker with things. Lately, I've been I've been trying to look more into like programming some hardware, some microcontrollers to make it do other stuff. So, just just tinkering really. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I want to thank you both. It's always a pleasure. Very for me personally, it's really rewarding to hear and meet with our students, knowing that you guys are having successes, um, hearing good things about the program, how it's impacted both of your both of you having opportunities to advance your education and career. So, pleasure getting to. Know Thomas and Ross getting to know you a little bit better. Yeah. And you know, we'll continue to stay in touch with both of you guys. Thanks, right, appreciate we'll, it. Yeah, we want to thank you guys and we want to thank our audience for tuning in again. Uh, Thomas and Ross, and stay tuned for our next episode. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>